need computer training for a group or office, contact us today to get a free demo of our training at www.teachucomp.com forward slash enterprise dash licensing. As we saw in the last lesson of this chapter, when you draw an object, the object should appear as being already selected. However, if it is not selected, then you need to click it in order to select it prior to formatting the object. Once the shape has been selected, you will see the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. This tab provides you with several formatting options for the selected object. At the left end of the Format tab in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab is the Insert Shapes group. This large scroll box in this group contains quick access to the shapes that you can insert and functions in the exact same way that the Shapes button drop-down menu does. To the right of it there are two additional buttons, the Edit Shape button and the Edit Text button. For some types of shapes that are drawn by hand, such as the scribble or the freeform, you can click this button after you have finished drawing the objects in order to display the editing points of the object. You can then click and drag the points in order to change the shape of the object. If you wish to add text to the shape that you have drawn, which may not be possible for all shape types, then you can click the Edit Text button to turn the selected shape into a text box. You can then enter the text into the shape in the same way as you would a document or a text box. Note that if you do add text to a shape, this entire grouping of buttons disappears and is replaced by the text group. In the Shape Styles section, you can make stylistic changes to your shape that affect the appearance of the fill and line of the shape. You can scroll through the choices shown in the large scroll box and click on one that you would like to apply to your shape if desired. You can also simply use the buttons available to the right of the scroll box to completely customize the appearance of your shape. You can use the Shape Fill drop-down to fill the inside of your shape with one of the many available colors, patterns, pictures, gradients, and textures available. Note that this button is unavailable for shapes that do not contain any fillable area, such as lines and arrows. If you wish to select a fill color, then you can simply click on one of the colors shown in the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down. If the colors shown aren't quite what you need, notice that you can select the More Fill Colors command in order to open the Colors dialog box. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you desire. You can either click the Standard tab and then select one of the colors shown in the Honeycomb of Color Choices, or you can click the Custom tab and then select any color you want. Note that at the bottom of both tabs, you can use the transparency slider to set the level of transparency you want to apply. After you select a color, click the OK button to select it. Note that if you did apply a fill effect to a shape and then wish to remove it, you can select the No Fill command in the Shape Fills button drop-down menu in order to remove any fill effect. You can also insert a picture into your shape as a fill effect. To do this, you would choose the Picture command from this drop-down. This would open up the Select Picture dialog box. Here you can navigate to and then select the picture that you want to use as the fill effect for the selected shape. Once you have your picture selected, click the Open button. You can select a gradient to apply to the selected shape by rolling your mouse pointer over the Gradient command under Shape Fill. Then you can click on a preset gradient that you want to apply. To apply a texture, simply roll your mouse pointer over the Texture command and then click on the texture that you want to apply from the choices shown in the side menu. You can also fill a shape with a two color pattern of your choice by selecting the pattern choice. This will open up the fill effects dialog box and display the pattern tab. In this tab, start by using the foreground and background drop downs to select your colors. Then, click on the pattern that you want to apply to the shape. Once you have selected your pattern, click the OK button to apply it. 
you will notice that the sample appears in this little preview window. Back in the Shape Styles group on the Format tab, you will find the Shape Outline drop-down. The choices that you make here affect the appearance of the lines in the shape. This is also the button that you can use to alter the appearance of shapes that are nothing more than lines, such as the line shape or the arrow shape. If you click the Shape Outline button, you will see that you can easily select a color shown in the color palette of choices in order to change the line color of your selected shape. If you want to remove the line color, you can select the No Outline choice. If you want to change the width of the shape's outline, then make a selection from the side menu of choices that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Weight command. Likewise, you can choose a different dash style for the outline from the choices available in the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the Dashes command. If you are formatting a line shape or an arrow shape, then you can change the endpoints on the line or arrow by making a choice from the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the arrows command. Since we do not have an arrow selected in our example, this will appear grayed out. Also, like the fill of a shape, you can make the outline a pattern of your choosing. Note that the weight of the not line would need to be quite significant before you would notice a pattern. However, if you select the Pattern command, this will open up the Fill Effects dialog box and display the Pattern tab again. Just like before, you choose the foreground and background colors, and then select the pattern. Once you have selected your choice, click the OK button. Back in the Shape Styles group on the Format tab, you will see the Change Shape button. You can replace the selected shape with another shape by clicking this button and then choosing the replacement shape from the listing of shapes shown. You can use the Shadow Effects group on the Format tab to apply shadowing to your shape. To do this, click the Shadow Effects drop-down and then choose the desired shadow style to apply. If you want to change the color of the shadow, you can click the Shadow Effects drop-down button and then roll your mouse pointer over the Shadow Color command. You can then choose a color from the palette of color choices shown. Note that if you would like Semi-Transparent Shadow, you can click the Semi-Transparent Shadow choice. This will allow objects placed behind the shadowed shape to appear through the shadow. If you apply a shadow, you can then use the five small buttons to the right of the Shadow Effects button in the Shadow Effects group to make adjustments. You can click the four directional buttons to nudge the shadow in the direction shown by the buttons. You can click the button in the middle of the five button set to toggle the shadow on or off for the selected shape. If you want to apply a 3D effect, you can do that instead of applying a shadow effect. You cannot, however, apply both effects to a shape. To apply a 3D effect, Click the 3D Effects button, and then choose the desired 3D effect. Note the various commands located at the bottom of this drop-down button's menu allow you to customize the appearance of the 3D effect. You can roll your mouse pointer over the 3D Color command to choose a color for the 3D part of the shape. You can roll your mouse pointer over the Depth command to select the amount of 3D depth to apply. You can also roll your mouse pointer over the Direction command to display a listing of directions in which you can extend the 3D aspect. You can also switch the 3D effect from Parallel to Perspective in the same menu. This also alters the appearance of the 3D part of a selected shape. You can roll over the Lighting command to select the direction from which you want the lighting to appear to strike the 3D object. You can also select the intensity of lighting to apply at the bottom of the side menu if desired. If you roll your mouse pointer over the Surface command, you can select from what type of material the 3D shape should appear to be made. 
This affects the appearance of the surface of the 3D shape. Also, like the Shadow Effects button, you have a set of five buttons available to the right side of the 3D effect group that allow you to alter the appearance of the 3D shape. You can click any one of these four directional buttons shown in order to rotate the 3D shape in the selected direction. You can also click the middle button in the set in order to toggle the 3D effect on or off. The buttons in the Arrange group display the same options that you had when you learned to format pictures and clip art. In the Arrange group, you can click the Position button to select from one of the preset placement options for the selected shape. If you have overlapping shapes in your document, you can click either the Bring to Front or Send to Back drop-down buttons in order to change the order in which the shapes overlap each other in the stack. You can click the Text Wrapping drop-down button in order to select from one of the preset text wrapping options for the selected image. You can click the Align button in order to choose from one of the available alignment options. The Group button is used if you have multiple drawn shapes simultaneously selected in your document. In this case, you can click the Group button to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. Note that you can also take a shape that has been grouped together and click the Group drop-down button to display a menu of choices. You can then select the Ungroup command to break the shapes back into their separate components. You can use the Rotate button to select a rotation option for the selected shape in your document. Also, just like with images, you can use the Height and Width spinner boxes in the Size group to resize the shape if desired. Like what you see? Get a free demo of our training for groups of five or more at www.teachucomp.com forward slash enterprise dash licensing.